in this ring. You've got a sulfur in a five-membered ring. Sulfurs are humongous. Remember the periodic table? Underneath oxygen. Same oxidation state as an oxygen. But you've got a sulfur in a ring. You've got a nitrogen with four bonds that you usually don't find. So it gives it kind of a plus charge, delta plus. Hmm. Yeah, delta plus. Methyl hanging off that ring. And ba-boom, ba-boom, one carbon, two carbons, OH. That would be an ethanol. That's a real alcohol group. They'll call the alcohols just the OH, but ethanol is two carbons. So you've got an ethanol hanging off a five-membered ring that's got a sulfur and a nitrogen in it that's bound to another ring by a carbon in between it that's got two nitrogens in that ring with an amine and a methyl on it. So thiamine, vitamin BS1, cool molecule. You don't see too many like this, I'm telling you. What you're going to find, too, is that the vitamin B2 riboflavin, we're going to call them the riboflavin centipede, this is a cofactor in other molecules, enzymes, vitamins, hormones, stuff like that. When you see the three ring structure centipede here, two nitrogens in these rings, there's uh, flavins that you're going to find, photosynthesis. Enzymes taking, harvesting the light energy and moving electrons around and stuff. These nitrogens down here, they can take electrons. You're going to find enzymes. They're going to be so, the chemical structures are going to just be mind-boggling. There's oh god, there's a hundred atoms right there, right? Well, when you see the riboflavin centipede hanging off a ruby ribose holding adenosine, it's going to be kids' play. So again, let's just read this a little bit here. It's a central component of the cofactors FAD and FMN required by all flavoproteins. Again, I didn't have a cartoon character, but just to kind of make it look cartoonish, testosterone, three six-membered rings with a penta ring, five on the outside. Estradiol, three six-membered rings with a penta ring on the outside. The OH and the methyl are still in the same place. So if you look at this, other than what's down here, see if I can block most of that off. Look at that. That is just like that. What's the difference? Half of, half of testosterone is exactly, totally, exactly the same as estradiol. Estradiol is the main estrogen. Estrogen is a family class of molecules, so it's not just one. Testosterone is one molecule. So when they say estrogen, it just bugs me. There's not an estrogen. There's not, it's estradiol is the one. Diol, two alcohols. Well, one is just like the regular testosterone's alcohol. But now, if you look at testosterone, what do you got down there? Double bonded O? That's where the women have an OH down there. What's up here? A single bond on that ring. Here, you got benzene. So, benzene being in the woman's molecule, we can't really stick to that motif. Got to change something here. But again, you see the aromaticity of this. A single bond in that ring there. But look at the similarities. There's not much difference between testosterone and estradiol, estrogens. The main difference is, and this is where you can test a microbiology, molecular biologist, if you really want to see if they know what they're talking about. Estrogens have proteins that bind them. So in women, men have estrogen, women have testosterone. But the difference is, in a woman, the estrogen can't do anything. Estradiol, as soon as it's made, there's a protein that is like the blob that grabs onto it. Thousands of times bigger than just this. 
So they have proteins that are binding it. In men, the estradiol is free to float around, and it does stuff. Don't think it doesn't. This was where I really found there's a key to my cartoon characters. This is S, what do you think the S is for? Hint, hint. Sulfur, adeno, adenine, adeno, huh? There's ruby, ruby's red. What does ruby ribose hold on to? Adenosine, this is a nucleic acid that is used as an enzyme, enzyme cofactor, sulfur. This has a little bit of everything in it again, doesn't it? You got an amine, carboxylic acid, sulfur, that's where the methionine, this is the backbone of an amino acid, this is the sulfur hanging off, that's the amino acid methionine that's bound to the nucleic acid that's being held by a ribose. So a nucleic acid got together with the amino acid. Pretty cool. And again, I've seen this structure thousands, hundreds of thousands of times maybe. Never did anything for me. But now when I look, I remember the whole nucleic acid, I remember the ribose sugar, and now I can look and I go, that's methionine. It's just a couple carbons hanging off with a sulfur on it. This was one of those I was flipping through and I'm like, phytic acid, I've never heard of it. I thought, this is going to be stupid. Okay, inositol, hexa. Kiss phosphate, one of those names that had so much you didn't even want to memorize it. And then I looked and it says, this is the main phosphorus holding molecule in your body, in plants, okay? So if you need phosphate, how is it going to be stored? How is it going to be carried around? You've got this six carbon center, six bonds out, it's holding six phosphates on the end of it. This looks like a pinwheel, man. This thing is cool. Six phosphates hanging off a six carbon ring. Now, see, this really, too, is why we've got to get in here because it's, you can't use this kind of structure drawing. It's flat. It's planar. It's not. Whenever you get six, you're going to get a chair or boat confirmation, they call these things. So you've got to see that these phosphates are going to be up. They're going to be down. They're going to be holding water. It's going to have a whole different look in your body. This I'm going to give you a sneak peek on, too, because I've looked at how the hemi group, they call it, is being held in these uh, porphyrin rings, they call it. These nitrogens now, two actually have the covalent bonds. Two are coordinated, they call it. But look, the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen, this shows how that's going to be held, right? So you've got to have the plus, plus two iron. Look at the ring here. These are all five-membered rings with a nitrogen on the head, right? Here are the double bonds on the bottom. Here are the double bonds are on the side. Here are the double bonds are on the top and the bottom. Here are the double bond is just on the bottom. So to look at this written in the, with the traditional, what they call Fletcher projection or whatever the regular chemical drawing is, it's flat, it's boring. You can't tell one from the other without really looking at it. This, you look and you can see the blue bonds are the original, what they would call sigma bonds in between the covalent bonds. That pi bond is gray, so when you look, you see the double bond and you see the original bond. I think this cartoon is the only way to go. This is another one of those that I just had to draw it. Folic acid. This vitamin has probably, a lot of you kids in this generation, you have a lot of your life 